The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cowboy Storyline. I am Nick Eatman. It is Wednesday, October the 30th. Man, October flying by. And let's see what the Cowboys can do as November rolls around. November has usually been a good month for this team. I know I know. when Tony Romo was the quarterback, he had like the best month of November ever. I think Dak's been pretty good then. Maybe the Cowboys can can flip the script. October was was as scary as as you would see any haunted house. I would I would imagine, especially in um, in certain stretches, certain games. Detroit, uh, there was third quarter was pretty bad in San Francisco. Didn't end as poorly as it was looking, but still it ended with a loss. So that not not good enough there. Uh, see if the Cowboys can change things up when they go to Atlanta. That will be in uh, November. Um, November 3rd, I guess, is when that that game will be. All right, 888-855-2297 is the number to call. We've already got some callers on the line, so we're going to just go to it right now. We've got Brian in Kansas City to start us off. Brian, what's up? Good morning, sir. Morning. How are you? Uh, I'm doing excellent, man. Doing excellent. Glad to be able to call. Got a day off. Glad to be able to call in and talk to you today. Sure, sure. Hey, so I got a question, and then uh, instead of an old player, I got a trivia a trivia for you today. Okay. So my my question is, um, I'm wondering if there's if there's a story to Kalen Carson being a participant in practice last week, and then a, it looked to me like a healthy scratch. Yeah. I just I was a little dumbfounded by that one, uh, and I'll let you answer it off the air, but. Uh, I'll uh, my my trivia question. I'll stay on just long enough to see that you get it because you you're the history guy. You may know this. I had to look it up. I had no idea. Hmm. In 1960, oh, our inaugural year, <laughs> who was the leading? So I'm sure you know who the starting quarterback is, right? Eddie LeBaron. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, I, that's the only one I knew of all these questions. That's the only one I knew. Okay, but. Who's the leading receiver? Uh, I don't know. Frank Clark? I don't know. It, on they, the team. They, you, you're, you're there, though. You're on the right team. It's Jim Duran, and he was the only, and this is according to pro football reference, the only pro bowler on the team. Mm. <laughs> they didn't win a game. I know that. They tied the Steelers, I believe, but they did not win a game. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. All right, that's it for me, sir. All right, I'll talk you. to you soon. All right. All right. Well, that's, uh, yeah. Anytime you start a trivia question off there, like, I feel like I can take it back pretty far, uh, you know, to to the decade I was born. But you get you get into the 60s, man. I, I, I don't have that one for you. All right. Let's go uh, to Irene, Falls Church, Virginia. Irene, what's hey. up? Hey, good morning. Good morning. Tough week. Tough week. Tough yeah. week. <laughs> Living in this area, man, I called uh, Hail Mary, too. I did. And I to see, I actually canceled plan. I was like, I'm not going to watch the Cowboys lose in this area out in public. It's not happening. So, man, Cowboys are affecting us. But, hey, it's Falcons week. I, but I did have to make a couple of comments on the game. Um, a lot of people talked, or a couple of people talked about, you know, the play calling at the end, acting like you had, like, 48 seconds left and no timeouts, um, and that you had to have 25 yards you know, chunk plays the whole time. Um, the other thing I was thinking of was with, like, the Des Bryant catch in 2014, kind of same similar, same thing. Even if we did, let's say this plays worked and we scored, all we would do is give San Francisco the ball back with plenty of time with that approach. So I didn't, I didn't understand it at all. Um, but if we were going to do these sorts of plays, I would have liked to seen it how uh, – I know we were also talking about Kittle on Dono. But I also noticed Malik Hooker covering Debo, uh, Kendricks covering Debo at least two times mm -hmm. of that. And I assume that I didn't watch the tape, and, and I guess you'll never really fully know, but it seemed like that was just they were scheming him open. And I think that's just what is really lacking in our offense yeah. because our defense, I mean, you know, they're missing so many people, and they really did hold their own. Um, for a while until they didn't because they couldn't get anything out of our offense. Anything. I think one more touchdown 
uh, sometime before the third, in the middle of the third quarter, we could have done it. And we still, we still could have won, which is why this has been so frustrating, just like Baltimore. Like, you know, Jason Garrett had the finish strong, and I, I feel like we need to show up to the beginning of the game shirt instead. So, um, anyway, those are my comments for, for Atlanta. Yeah. This was a win in my book uh, early in the season, and now uh, I know that on one of my fantasy leagues, I started Kirk Cousins over Dak Prescott, and he scored, I don't know what he scored, but he had four touchdowns last week, so it's yeah. not going to be pretty. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, we can hold our own, I hope, with them, but I just don't know how to engage this team until our offense gets rolling. Yeah. I, I think the defense is doing All enough, right. to be honest. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Irene. Um, a lot of stuff there. I, I, you know, you're right about the scheming, scheming those guys open and, and, and finding, you know, uh, ma- mismatches for Debo against the linebacker. I mean, I, I haven't seen, you know, CD against anybody, you know, other than like two two corners or whatever. But then again, I will say this: that is what makes the 49ers so good, is because they've got those type of players. Um, you know, I think Christian McCaffrey, you know, his game went to another level when he played, uh, when he got to San Francisco. And, and you, you know, you have a running back who can play receiver. You have a receiver in Debo who can be a running back. You've got whatever Kyle Ustek is, he can be fullback, tight end. So the versatility that they have, it just creates so many mismatches. That's one of the reasons why I think San Francisco has been so good. And I think those are the type of players that, you know, that the Cowboys could use. I mean, that's what you kind of wanted Lipke to be, you know, for like a Ustek type. But they don't have some of those other guys to create those mismatches. You talked about that last drive. Why were they throwing it deep and all that? I mean, two of the plays were... A deep one of them was a pass to, to Turpin, which was a nice throw. Uh, it was right where it needed to be. I don't know if Turpin, you know, that's not a play he comes down with a lot. And then another one's a deep ball to Brooks. But two others were like thrown short of the sticks. One of them was almost picked, and another one was just nobody was open. So uh, I don't think it was a desperate drive like they were trying to, to you know, hurry up and score. I think they were trying to do whatever they could to move it. They two two passes short, two passes deep. Nothing was open. Nothing was was there. And you know that's this one of those where where you'd like to see Dak run it for a few yards on second down. But you know that if he's not going to do that or can't do that, then the offense is definitely going to be limited. Uh, and and that's something that that has to be addressed. Whether he's got you know this ankle issue that that we saw him in a boot. Before, if that's still a problem for him, then it's got to be addressed here this off season. Whether 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 he needs surgery or whatever whatever it needs, uh, you know. But he's got to you got to have a quarterback, especially one that you're paying like that. Has got to be able to to at least pick up some first downs with his legs at times. And right now, we're just not seeing him wanting to do that. Um, all right, let's go to Gary in New Mexico. Hey, Nick. At hey. least we didn't give up forty last week. Oh, true. Think about the think about the positive. I got a trivia question for you. Okay. All right, this is a good one, and I'm going to try if I'm able to call every week and get through. I'm going to try to have a trivia question that relates to that week's opponent. We might have a game for you, Gary. We we okay. might we might have something for you. We're working on on some things where we're looking at <laughs> trivia questions. We might have something. We may we may even call you. We'll, we'll fit, we're we're ironing out some no, things here, but that's fine. No, you're fine. No, don't don't make any special exceptions for me. But here's this week's trivia question, and I actually knew this one, but but this is kind of an interesting thing. Okay. Can you tell me tell me the former Cowboy Pro Bowl quarterback that later became the general manager and executive vice president for the Atlanta Falcons? He was a former quarterback. Pro Bowl quarterback. Oh, man. Later became the general manager and executive vice president of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Thank Craig to earlier in the show. Craig Morton? No, I I don't know. know. Was it it Eddie LeBaron? It was Eddie Eddie LeBaron, yeah. I never knew that. Uh-uh. Yeah, I did. Well, and this is interesting because your first caller yeah. talked about Eddie LeBaron. So Eddie LeBaron, this is a cool story because I was born and raised in Midland, Texas, and uh-huh. this Eddie was way before my time. But Eddie LeBaron was retired from the Washington Redskins when the Cowboys got their franchise, and the Cowboys reached out to him and talked him out of retirement. 
to be because they wanted a veteran quarterback when they started their team. So Eddie LeBaron was actually the starter the first three years, and then Don Meredith took over, I think, in 1963. But Eddie LeBaron actually was good enough. He got selected to the Pro Bowl in 1962. And then later on, he became the general manager of the Atlanta Falcons and actually built a pretty good team. Those Falcon teams that Eddie LeBaron managed, uh, they faced the Cowboys twice in the playoffs ultimately losing. So that's just a little interesting story about our first ever starting quarterback. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So good, good to anyway, know. Like back right. to, back to real time though, we could talk all day about everything that's wrong with this team, but I want to keep it positive. Okay. The, the one positive about Sunday night, they didn't quit. They did not quit. And, and there's something to be said for that. And, and Chris Collins were put up a stat during that game about the 49ers. And I know the 49ers are good and, and, and they're a different team. But he talked about, you know, two of the last three years, the 49ers had been three and four. And they ended up going to the NFC Championship game. So right now, Dallas looks like a six win team. But things can change. And the season still got a long way to go. So, I mean, let's just take it week by week. The fact that they didn't quit to me on Sunday night, because they, they could have easily just thrown in the towel when it was 27 to 10. That, mm -hmm. to me, was a, that was the one positive I took out of that game. So I'd like your thoughts on that. Yeah. Moving forward. No, I, I, I agree with that. And, uh, and I, you know, I appreciate the, the calls to say that. And, and, and I don't worry about, you know, how many people that are listening right now that roll their eyes and say, ah, oh, who cares? Who cares? They're, that's what they're paid to do. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're paid to do that, but, but it's, it's the fight, that type of fight that's got to continue to happen. Now, what I challenge the team to do, and I think we all challenge them to do, is make sure that you're, you're not quitting, giving up. See, people don't give up. People, you know, people don't give up on the, during, during the game that much. I don't think it happens during the game, but I think where where you know it happens sometimes is when are you are you trying as hard in the middle of the week that that kind of stuff when things don't go well. And so that's that's what we've always said. I think that they'll continue to fight. I don't see a six win team here. I really don't. I, I, I there's not a lot of six win teams, you know, really in the NFL. I mean, it's not designed for you to be that bad. Uh, it's it, it's not. I mean, it's designed for you to be better. And assuming, and I'm assuming that these guys are coming back. If they are coming back, and you know, with with the fight that we've seen, yeah, they'll. I think I think it'll be better than that. Um, you know, but the you know the the Detroit game is tough to swallow, but. They're kind of doing that to everybody uh, right now. They, they may be the best team in football. I mean, and, and they, they certainly showed it there. Now, I can't, I can't argue. I mean, I can't. I don't have anything for the Saints game. I mean, that was a long time ago, but the, that one's just a mystery. I mean, the way the, way the Saints played that game and the way they've played since then, um, that one's going to be tough to, to figure out. But, you know, the Cowboys are going to, you know, they go to Atlanta this week. This is a game that they've, they've got to win. I mean, they've got to win this game. I mean, I know Atlanta's good. The, their record is good. Kirk Cousins is having a good year um, by Kirk Cousins' standards. But um, they've, got to, they've got to go win the game. And they've got to act like what they've, every time they play Kirk Cousins and they got to beat them. All right, let's go to uh, Robbie in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Hey, Nick, you just said everything I was going to talk about. <laughs> I oh, swear, man, I was coming in here with a good attitude. All excited. I said, I've got some good things to talk about. You know, we didn't give up the fight. We kept playing. Our defense looked a little better. Our run game is still atrocious, but mm -hmm. we tried. You know, at least we got to see uh, Cooks a little bit. I'd like to see him more. Maybe we will. Yeah. So i got to come up with something off the fly. That's something I've been meaning to ask you for a while. Besides this show, what is the favorite part, your favorite part of your job? Is it talking with the players? Is it watching the games? And that's it. I'll, I'll listen off air. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, the games, the games are, are, are awesome. I mean, like I have, that's why I haven't missed one. in since this 2000 season when, you know, Troy Aikman was a quarterback against uh, the Ravens. It's the last game I've ever missed. Um, so yeah, I love going to the games. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. You think about, to think about from y'all's standpoint, 
you know, just as a fan, and I hear it. I hear it in the calls. I hear you guys say, like, man, I'm getting to go to the game this week, or I've been to five games ever, or three games ever, or going to my first game, or all that kind of stuff. And and I don't lose sight of that, like, that I've gotten to go to the games for 25 straight years now. Um, and and, and I, I'm proud of that, especially through 2020, through that that COVID season. That was it was dicey at times, you know. You 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 can't be coughing over here, or you're not going to get to go, or you can't be sitting next to somebody who is, or you don't get to go. I mean, it was it was a challenge. My point is, is that there's nothing like going to the game. There's nothing like it sitting there when the crowd's going crazy, whether you're in the press box or whatever, and you're and you're, you're trying to just stay calm and all that, and just seeing that. It, that's, I mean, and, and so, yeah, that, that's kind of an easy answer, though. The games, everyone loves the games, but uh, the, it, it is pretty. It, and the whole thing leading up to it. You know, I love Saturday afternoon being on the, you know, in the charter, just getting to go and all that. So just the whole process of going to the games is, is awesome. But I, this show, I've said it before, the show is up there. I really, I really like it. It kind of takes me back and reconnects um, myself to, to the uh, fan base uh, like I haven't before. All right, let's go. Um, to Rob in Vegas. Hey, Nick. Hey, Rob. You know, we're talking about, you know, Dak not running. and. Wait, time out. Do I have to apologize for calling you a head case yesterday? No, absolutely not. I mean, I called myself one, too. We all are. That's really my point is we're all head yeah, cases. Yeah, I mean, that's that's why I call in. This is why we all call in. Yeah. You're my guy, by the way. I hope everyone knows that. Like, like, and I—that's why you're the captain of the show. It's gonna be hard to take the C off your chest this year, uh, because you're the captain. You're the one people people look to. They said even Rob. Rob says it too. You know, so oh, if Rob says it, so (laughs) you're the captain. Go ahead, Rob. It's it's not like I I try to argue, and I know I put you in bad spots. It's just that, unfortunately, what's wrong with this team is is just. Most of it is not on the field, and that's that's what bothers fans. I think yeah. you could fix the on-field stuff. You could see that that safety is not playing. You want to replace Donovan. You know, you could do that. The issues are off the field. I talked about it yesterday, obviously, with uh, you know Mike McCarthy is a dead man walking, and I thought that was a bad move. And then it's listen. I like Jerry Jones. You know. I like his attitude, but he's he's now starting to hurt the team more. I mean, he comes out yesterday, and he basically t- says, well, I really don't want Dak running. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, yeah. you just dropped $231 million. Dak is not Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. Those guys didn't have to run. If you saw Dak at Mississippi State, if you saw Dak his rookie year, his set, what made Dak a, a top-tier quarterback was the combination of his legs and his arm, just like Lamar Jackson. If you take running away from Lamar Jackson, he's average, maybe not even as a thrower. Why you would come out and say that? Because it, I look at sports a little differently. They're all great athletes. They're all the best at what they do. So I look at the intangibles, and now you say to yourself, uh, so wait a minute, you don't want him to run because you're afraid about him getting hurt. What about me? All of a sudden, Michael Parsons' ankle is going to keep him out the rest of the year, 10 weeks, it seems. It, you know, you send a bad message. Why is he more important than me? If he's not doing whatever it takes to win the game, why should I? And that's, that's the problem I have. You know, we keep hearing Dax the leader of the team. That's 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 invisible. That you that's that's you know you can't put a finger on that. And I just don't know why Jerry just does it. Just keep your mouth shut. You first of all, why would you say that now? Defense is like, see, I told you to do what I got to. And he's and he's you know we always heard Jerry medals, and I'm like, nah, he's not meddling. Come on, really? Yes, yes. Because you know that trickles down to the head coach, and now we're seeing it. We're all talking about it. We're t- now they're talking about it on TV. Why doesn't he run anymore? It's such a huge part of today's game yeah. because if your quarterback is a statue, you really can't win unless your offensive line is just incredible, pretty much like the Lions, and that's what makes them so good. Right. So I just, I, it, it, it's, and Dak has to be. 
frustrated. Dak is probably saying, dude, why are you putting me? Because now I better see Dak turn into Lamar Jackson come Sunday. Now Dak has to prove everything. Now he, yeah. Now he has to well, go run it. Well, and, you're, and, you're right. And, and, and he should. probably will. He probably will run more. I have a feeling that he is going to run more in this game just be, just because of that. Sometimes maybe that's what Jerry was trying to do all along is is uh, is maybe throw, throw I, I don't know, throw people off. Who maybe, knows? you know, maybe maybe you're right. But, Who knows? Uh, but I also put it on the coach. You have to, you know, when you have meetings, you have to point out that, look, you see this play right here? Yeah. You should have ran it. You should have ran it. You should have ran it. Uh, and honestly, if you're going to talk about injuries, I think you quarterbacks get hurt way more in the pocket than they do running. You see all the Achilles, Achilles that, you know, these quarterbacks are blowing out in the pocket, and they don't see what's coming in the pocket. So, I don't know. It's I just hope. Right. That puts it all together. All right, Rob. I appreciate it. I think I think you're you're right on, and and, and a lot of this. Um, and I've you know we we talked about Dak running, and um, you know I didn't like hearing that. You know, like like you know, from Jerry say that because it's like, oh, what am I not seeing? What do I not know? Yeah, you know, what do I don't know about this situation? Because I, I'm, you know, when you pay him that kind of money, you, you're right. That's what the quarterbacks in today's today's world. That's what they do. Even you know, and and. And Brock Purdy didn't didn't you know he's not running a four three you know he's he's not he's not like this this great super athlete but he he's smart with the way he runs and it was effective and so you just kind of want that you just want a guy that can do it when it's there go go make the play he made some plays with his legs and and I get it he's younger and Dak was doing some of that early on and but even later in your career you still have to be able to do that when it's there because if you know, if not, then d- teams are going to play it even differently. Maybe that's what they're doing right now. So, all right, let me take a break here on, on Cowboy Storyline. Uh, we've got a couple more calls. Uh, i got a caller on the line. We're going to get when we come back here on Cowboy Storyline. Cowboys fans, when it comes to navigating the ever-changing world of tax, your business needs a partner it can trust to tackle even your biggest tax challenges. Ryan is the largest firm in the world dedicated exclusively to business taxes. Our team of tax professionals has local expertise in all areas of tax and can help you uncover savings opportunities you didn't know you had. Learn more about how Ryan can improve your overall corporate tax performance by visiting Ryan.com. Ryan, the official tax partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, y'all, Matt Pittman of Meat Church here. With football season kicking off, I'm already gearing up to bring the smoker back to AT&T Stadium for some epic tailgates. But with that Texas heat, it's crucial to keep my beer hand cramping cold. That's where Yeti's insulated Colster can cooler comes in clutch. This year, you can even get them with the iconic star engraved on the side. Licensed Yeti Cowboys gear is now available at Stadium Pro Shops, concessions, and on Yeti.com. Check it out today. Yeti, official cooler and drinkware of the Dallas Cowboys. We got big personalities. We got big hair, big belt buckles. We got fans all across this big state and enemies in every other one. We even got a big star on the 50-yard line. Smirnoff knows football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks home or away, we rally together, we cry together, and we always rally cry together because, most of all, we got big love for them boys. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back to Cowboys Storyline. Cowboys Nation, it's time to get into the giving season. Tune in to see the country music star Lainey Wilson and special guest perform during the Salvation Army's annual Red Kettle kickoff halftime show this Thanksgiving on Fox. Every donation stays in the community to provide help for those in need. So tune in and watch the Cowboys and Giants. Lainey Wilson this Thanksgiving. Give today at SalvationArmyUSA.org. All right. That's about as long as read as, as we can have here on the show. On the show of Cowboys Storyline, good stuff. Let's go to Sebastian. He's been waiting on the line. Sebastian, Savannah, Georgia, what's up? What's going on, Mr. Eatman? How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Are you going to the game? I don't really even know how far Savannah is from it. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah? We actually just got back from uh, the Vegas Raiders versus Kansas City Chiefs game uh, in Vegas because our kind of led us. We went out to Vegas. Nice. All right. Well. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I look at our team, I look at them, and I'm like – you're just talking about Dak running. 
Patrick Mahomes is the king of that, running down the sideline, faking the pass, and getting just a few yards and getting out of bounds. I just want to see that much from Dak. But what was disappointing and what was what's going on with this team that's so confusing is, you know, you're in Las Vegas, you make some bets or whatever. So I decided to put the Cowboys on an underdog ticket. This underdog ticket is excellent. It's six college teams, three pro teams. All the teams nailed it. And it's a nail biter for the Cowboys. So I don't watch the game. I'm like, I'm going to go take a nap because I'm on the East Coast time. So, like, I was tired that time. I'll take a nap and I get up. And I hear, what are you folks doing? And I come out of my room and I'm like, oh, it's Cowboys. We're down 17. And I'm like, you know what? Line three. I'm like, all we need to do is go score a couple touchdowns. But I'm like, we could. What happened? We were When I went to bed, we were like zero to three or something like that. And we were holding them. We were doing well. So the reason that I put them on there wasn't for, you know, sentimental reasons. I'm very logical. I said, this team is super injured. We owe them a butt whooping at least one time. And I was like, this is a time where we're about even. And I said, if we're even and you, you, take, you put it to the quarterbacks, our quarterback should be better than Brock Purdy. And he was not. Yeah. But you know what? Mike McCarthy and this front office have, have not helped Dak as far as this year goes. The problem with, like, I was very confused with that entire last five-minute sequence. I was like, what is Mike McCarthy doing? We get in there. You call a play that I knew was going to the left. I see, You see Terp go across all the time, and they do this deep shot. And the one before the deep shot, I'm like, he's going to throw it. And you see the three red jerseys. I could see the three red jerseys. I was like, what the heck is Dag looking at? But he dropped it. And I was like, oh. Oh, I thought we were going to have one of those old-school Romo moments where he gets the pick right at the end of the game and it's over with. We go for it again. We take the deep shot. Turf dropped it. It was a beautiful pass. Mm. It's okay. Turf is not a star player like C.D. Lamb is, which I would hope him or Ferguson would have been the ones that we gave that to, right? But when we go for it on fourth down at our own, like, 25, why? And when we burn all of our timeouts before they even get to the two-minute warning, I've never been so confused with a sequence at the end of a game than I was with that. So if you can talk about that, and I had one other question before I go. Um, have you ever seen that weird thing that they do where they kind of lateral the ball around at the end of the game work? I mean, yeah, I've seen it work. But, I mean, like like one, like one, three times ever. I mean, I've seen it work. Yeah. yeah. I was just curious because you've I mean, seen a lot more games than I have. But you guys have a great day, Mr. It works. Man, it works. I'll yeah, thanks. No, no, it, it doesn't work very often. But, but yes, every now and again, you can go Google them. I mean, um, the Jaguars and the Saints – that happened, I don't remember what year that was, but it was a weird game. We were late in the season. They were down seven. The Saints were down seven. They did all this crazy stuff, and they scored, and then they missed the extra point and lost the game, and their season was over. That was that was pretty sad. Um, Duke and Miami in college football is one of the craziest ones. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously you got the Cal-Stanford game is where it kind of started, but – uh, yeah, I mean, it, it happens. It, it works. There, uh, but but it, it's got you got to be very very lucky, and usually usually it's a turnover. It's what usually happens is it adds it adds to your turnover list uh, because they'll throw it away and it's a fumble. Another team recover it and that's in the, the game. All right, um, you kind of lost me a little bit early on with the bets and all that stuff. One thing I think I heard did I hear that you went to bed when the game was when the Cowboys were winning? That's kind of what I thought I heard through all of that, but I don't know. Anyways, I think your point is like like everything, Dak. Dak needs to, to run it. Uh, you know what? What going back to the last caller too, with Rob was was talking about is, you know, why don't why don't you just tell Dak that you can't run it? You're not really a runner anymore. That's not what. That's not your game. Like he is kind of a a hold your beer, you know, hold my beer type of guy. Like, all right, all right, you don't think so? I mean, we'll see, we'll see. I I still think he can, and I think he'll have to. Um, but yeah, it's a little confusing of why he hasn't done it so far. All right, let's go to Gavin in Oklahoma City. Hey, Nick. Hey, Gavin. I hope all is well with you, man. Yeah, man. I got uh, two quick questions for you, and I'm gonna throw my opinions on them questions very quickly, and I'll get off and listen. All right. Um, so first off, if you could pick a position, or I guess I should say position group of both sides of the ball to play better in order to turn this thing around, if they did turn this thing around, what what position group do you think would need to play better? Mine would be the defensive tackle room and the, I guess you could say offensive line group, but specifically the tackles. Because 
I feel like if the tackles play better, then Dak will be better. Obviously, that'll make everybody better on the offense and the run game as well. And I also think on defense, if your tackles play better, your ends will start playing better, and then the safeties will look better. Because I think we've all come to understand maybe our safeties not aren't as good as we thought they were without right. that pressure on defense. Yeah. And uh, my second quick thing is uh, I wanted to know, since we're at the halfway point of the season, what your outlook is for Guyton so far, in your opinion. Uh, I went, I, I called Monday, and my first thing I wanted to talk to you about was the tackles, and now I was disappointed. But I, I kind of went back and watched some film on Guyton, and I, I feel good about what he put on tape against San Francisco. Actually, yeah. He had problems, don't get me wrong, but I just think He's got a positive outlook. I still feel good about Guyton, and I still believe in Guyton. Yeah, I that's all I got for you today. All right, Appreciate thanks, you, man. thanks, Gavin. I, I do too. I, I think that you know, regardless of what this what happens this season, and and you know, I, I I'm not saying you know start the thinking towards next year. I'm, I'm not doing that. But what I'm saying is, is regardless of what happens, you're you're gonna look back and go when when the season when we get into next year, you're gonna be like, man. I think Tyler Guyton's ready to really, really be a good player. Uh, he's got to get through this. Let's not forget, Tyler Smith had some issues too his first year, especially with penalties. Penalties were a problem for him. Um, and Now, he, he was doing a nice job. He actually moved from tackle to guard and you know, do all that. He, he was doing that in his rookie year. That was very impressive. But he had some issues too. Um, and But I think when you look at, man, he played a lot of football his rookie year. Um, he'll get his body in, in, in a better shape. I think Guyton will next year, you know, kind of get more of that, that left tackle body. Uh, all players in their first to second year take that, that leap there. So I think that it was a very good decision for the Cowboys to say, whatever they were thinking about, oh, I'm sliding him out to left, Tyler out to left tackle and maybe play uh, Bass. No, I, I, I like what they're doing with Guyton. I think it's going to prove to be a good, a good move. Because he's got to learn how to play football, and that best way to do it is for him to play football. So I like what they're doing with him. And to answer your first question, it's always the O-line, D-line for me because that 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 changes everything. Your tackles play better up front on defense. Your safeties, your, your rushers, like you said, they'll all be better. And, and the same with the O-line, too. So I, you know, I, I would, I would agree with that. You know, your offensive line, defensive lines really, really struggled for sure. And and this team misses Micah Parsons and and, and D Law in, in the worst way. Uh, I, you know, I was looking at some stats. You realize that this team hasn't had an interception since September. I mean, they've gone all of October without a pick, and it was the one Oruwari had, kind of on a deep ball, you know, on that like a hail mary type throw. That's really the last interception that they've had. Another stat for you. Micah Parsons, by far, leads this team in quarterback pressures with 21. The next closest is 12. Tank Lawrence leads this team in sacks with three. They haven't played since September against the Giants. Sounds like a problem. All right, Bob in Rio Grande Valley. Morning, Nick. Hey, Bob. Uh, I want to compliment Rob. It, uh... I think that he's sat back and analyzed the situation and hit it right exactly the nail on the head. Uh, the, the game against Atlanta. They go in or, or against... Uh, uh, 49ers? Yeah, thank you. Uh, they go in at halftime and they're down. It, uh, and we're up. If they make adjustments, we don't. The next thing you know in the third quarter... We're down 17 points. Mm-hmm. It's uh, that's coaching. That's the lack of, of uh, changing. It uh, uh, recognizing the fact that the other team is going to be doing some things different and being ahead of the curve and preparing for it. And getting back to uh, what Rob said, uh, you know, Jerry Jones is the owner of the team, but he's his team's own worst enemy. It uh, he. He sabotages so many things that his coaches are trying to do with his big mouth. It's absolutely unbelievable. It, uh, I don't see us being better than an 8-8 eight eight team this year. I really don't. I wish it was different. It, uh, I love my Cowboys. It, I look forward to, to the podcast, to, to all you guys and your programs all week long. I look forward to the games. It, uh, I, 80 years old, I kind of – center my life around the Cowboys in the season. 
And in the off season, when you guys aren't on, I'm kind of lost. I don't have anything to do in the daytime. It, uh, so I wish Jerry just shut up and let the Cowboys play and let the coaches coach and let the chips fall where they may. Thanks for taking my call. All right. All right. Um, I appreciate the opinion. I I don't think that's going to change. Um, now you can you can argue whether or not you know like that really is affecting the team and all that, but that's um, that's neither here nor there. Um, but but yeah, I mean you're you're right about the like the third quarter. I mean they they they've been outscored sixty one to nineteen in the third quarter this year. That's. That's where that's where they are. I mean, that's that's and and that is preparation. I mean, it hasn't been. I, I'm trying to look real quick what it is in the first quarter. Yeah, down 47 to 26. So, you know, in the first and third quarters, when you're starting a game, that's uh, 88 the points that they've given up, and my math says 45, 88 to 45 in the first and third quarters combined. So. I've been I've I've had the questions asked about should they stick with the game plan or the, you know but the game plan that's the game plan the game plan is showing you that it's not working to start with so I think that's kind of where the problem is is this the preparation teams are starting out better than them they're starting out with going and getting points the Cowboys are not so you can argue all day long like why is McCarthy continuing to take the ball it's not working in the third quarter either so so. I, I'm not. I would take the. I would defer every time. I would defer. I'm not ever taking the ball. Um, but what I'm saying is, I don't think it's. Cha- it wouldn't change that much right now. Um, let's take. Um, let's take a last break, real quick. I know we have another caller, but let's let's take a, a last break here on Cowboy Storyline. We'll be right back to answer a couple more calls. Discover Aiden, the official luggage partner of the Dallas Cowboys and Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Known for top-tier engineering and craftsmanship, Aiden offers more than just bags. Originating from Australia and designed in New York, it merges fashion, design, and culture. Used by Dallas Cowboys players, staff, and the entire organization, Aiden provides style and functionality for all travelers. Visit AidenTheBrand.com and use code AidenXCowboys for 25% off your purchase. Travel like your favorite stars with Aiden. Altec Lansing has been perfecting sound since 1927, bringing you decades of audio excellence to elevate your Dallas Cowboys tailgate ritual. Equip your next pregame with the Sound Rover 180 with six hours hours of playtime, built-in microphone, multicolor light modes, and a rugged exterior that's built to last. Visit alteclancing.com slash cowboys15 for 15% off your Sound Rover 180. That's A-L-T-E-C-L-A-N-S-I-N-G dot com slash cowboys15 for 15% off. Altec Lansing, official audio partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to Cowboys Storyline. Cowboys Nation, Dallas Cowboys United, presented by Globe Life, is now exclusively in the Dallas Cowboys app. Join the official fan club today to receive access to all the new Cowboys drops, features, team news, and pre-sale access. Fan and kid of the game, download the app now to join. All right, let's go to the phone lines here. we got a few more minutes on this show. Jeremy in D.C. Jeremy. Hey, what up, Nick? How you doing? I'm doing fine, man. How about yourself? I'm good, good, good. You staying out of trouble? No. No. No, are you? Uh, hey, man, so I, I got one question. And, then I got, I and I got one question for you, too. How What's many, that? How many times have you heard the words Hail Mary this week? How many times have I heard the word what? Hail Mary. Or it's two words, actually. Oh, man. More than you want? <laughs> They still talking about it. I'm sure. Job. I'm sure he's in D.C. Um, I mean, have they got the parade mapped out where the where the Super Bowl parade's going to be? <laughs> you you would have thought it was the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, Derek Eagleton said to me, I, I thought it was a great uh, great point. He said this this what they're doing reminds us of Cowboys 2016 when Dak was a rookie and. Everything they were touching was gold. You know, it's just working. It's just working for them. And sometimes you have years like that, and that's the way it looks so far for for uh, for Washington. So I like Dan Quinn. Good for them. Not good for the Cowboys, but good for Dan Quinn. Anyways, go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, so um, my question first is: Do you think if the Cowboys was to get like more more defensive tackle help, 
that Osa will be able to play defensive end since he's not um, since he's not the type of tackle that can that can take on double teams. And then my statement is just um, something that I saw on the internet. Uh, F for general manager, and I, I I went on a little rant and telling people like the Cowboys is one of the most winning winning this franchise in the Super Bowl era, and that's all because of Jerry Jones. And all these people that keep down in Jerry Jones, he is the reason why y'all Cowboys fans. So what y'all need to do is. Y'all need to get y'all to act together and act like Cowboys fans and stop being like Stephen A. Smith and all those other guys. And that's all I really yeah. got to say. I feel like my man Anthony from Miami. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, yeah. So that's it, Nick, and uh, I'll, I'll listen right. on the other end, man. And Appreciate y'all, it. Y'all have a good day. Thank you. I mean, th- thanks for the call, Jeremy. I, You know, it's um, I hear a, a lot – a lot of criticism, obviously, towards Jerry as the GM and all that. And then, then you'll often hear, you know, they, you know, this team's got a lot of talent. They got too much talent to be doing this and this and this. And and that's when you're, wait a second, you know, the GM did he bring that talent? You know, so that's what makes it it's difficult um, because they do have some some good players. They've drafted very well. They, they have talented players. They have guys going to the Pro Bowl. Uh, they have a lot of guys, which, you know, I get the Pro Bowls can be political at times, but, but they, they've got good players. We, we, we've seen that. Um, and, and this year, you know, they're, they're, they're a good player. A lot of, some of them left in free agency, so some of their depth got, got hurt there. But, you know, it, it's a tough argument to just say, all the time, you know, the, the blaming the GM and all that. When you see the talent, you see the players there, and you know how they got here. Um, but it's not working right now on the field. The combination of these players that are here, the ones that are healthy, with the coaching staff, with the schemes, with the matchups they've had, it's not working. They're three and four. They're, they're three and four, and I, I get that. So I understand there's frustration there, and there should be. All right, let's go to Lester in Minnesota. Is our last call, Lester. Hey, um, I kind of got caught the end of the what the last call was talking about, about the talent. My evaluation of, of the pro bowlers and the talent, sure, we got a lot of pro bowlers, and we got and Jerry has picked a lot of good ones. But <clears throat> over the years, it hasn't produced uh, uh, not even an NFC championship. So I would rather have a little less talent and the NFC Championship or Super Bowl, um, he picks good players. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but yeah. it's not a mountain to too much of anything except pro bowlers. <laughs> I mean, that's good, I guess. But uh, I think us as fans, we would rather see sure. uh, I mean, uh, we, a little bit more. We all would. We all, uh, you're right. We, we all would. Let, yeah, if, <laughs> if you would trade five pro bowlers for five more wins, that's fine. I mean, how do you, how do, you do that, though? <laughs> How do you how do you trade that? Well, well, you see, it's, it would take uh, half the show for me to explain. But what I would say is that Jerry and the coaches, they all and 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 Will McClay and whoever else is in the rooms when when they draft the players, everyone must be on the same page. And what I mean by that is that whatever philosophy is going on. Well, we're going to run the ball, so we should have, you know, five running backs. So what, whatever, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like they're, they're on the same page, but it doesn't seem like they're fully on the same page. Whereas we'll get, you know, I mean, I don't know how it works, but it doesn't seem that way. I just put it like that. But the reason why I called in <laughs> is because I'm going to say what I always say. Until we get a good to great, I'm sorry, a good to very good offensive and defensive line at the same time, build a team that way at the same time, we're going to be up and down every year. So what I would do, what I would have done, I'm sorry, in training camp, this is the offensive line I would have put together. Training camp, I know we can't do it now. All right. I would have put, put guidance at right tackle. The president, where he is, that's fine. BB, uh, and I would have moved uh, still to left guard, and then I would have kicked out Tyler Smith. 
That would have been the line of training camp. Run with it, roll. And then you could switch Guyton to left tackle later like they did uh, Tyron Smith in his rookie year. He played right tackle for a while. And then they you ever, put him on the left You ever tackle. seen Terrence Steele play guard? No, I mean, I'm, I, that's why I said training camp. Well, I know, but have you ever seen him play guard? I mean, I, I, I have. he doesn't really play guard, and you just paid him a lot of money, like $25 million contract, whatever, to, to play right tackle. So what if he well, sucks at guard? Like, what if that now you're paying? You know what I mean? I mean, just because you can play tackle doesn't mean you can play guard and vice versa. So that would have been kind of tricky. They just paid him to play right tackle. That's kind of why they didn't do that. Hey, Lester. Well, again, again, um, they're, they're switching players around. Right no, they now. are. I mean, they I mean, are. And I get it. I, mean, <laughs> I get your point. Training camp's the time to do it. Lester, I'm going to have to cut you off because we have to get going here. Okay. But you call back tomorrow. I don't mean to, to cut you off here because you have good points. And you're not wrong that training camp's the time to do some of those things. Uh, all I know is this is Zach Martin did not want to play right tackle or left tackle. Zach Martin didn't want to play tackle. He wanted to play guard. He's one of the greatest offensive linemen in the history of the NFL and, and of the Cowboys. And he didn't want to really play tackle. There must be a reason for that. So what I'm, my point is, is that it's not just a tweak or two here or there. And they already paid Terrence Steele that money. So if he plays left guard and he's not very good at doing that, um, then you know that, that would be a huge problem. So what I think you should don't forget the fact of how how great Tyler Smith is at doing that because that that is underrated how quickly he's doing it. Not a lot of teams could, I mean, players could go back and forth like that. Anyways, great call. Great, great show as always, guys. You guys have done a really awesome job today. Good talking to you guys. We'll do it again tomorrow on Cowboy Storyline. So for Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. We'll see you tomorrow on the Storyline. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?